Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is June 27th, 2022. This video is called Before Abraham Was, I Am. That is pretty much the verse that I left you with in the last video. And since then, uh, the Lord has been speaking to me about that. And I think that it bears um, a lot more teaching. And so I want to bring that forth today. You've heard me say that if Jesus were to come into a church today, he would most likely be thrown out on his head if not torn limb from limb. In other words, the church, most of the church would treat Jesus in the same way that the Jews treated Jesus. And I want, I want to try to make it clear today why the Jews were so incensed at Jesus. See, the church would be incensed too because I don't think that our Lord would be very happy with the way that most churches do business or would be happy with most of the doctrine taught in the churches. I'm going to start today by reading again from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, starting at verse 14, to the last church of the seven, to the church in Laodicea. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, The words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. The words of the Amen. Remember in the book of John, I've been focusing on the many times that Jesus said, Amen, Amen, which translated means truly, 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 or in truth, in truth. Or this is the truth. This is the truth. I say to you. In other words, he's putting emphasis upon what he is saying. And he's saying, what I'm telling you is true. And so here to the church in Laodicea, it begins by saying the words of the Amen. The words of the truth. And he says, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot, so because you were lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew you from my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich, and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. And I've shown you in the last few videos how these are three more words that our Lord has given us to describe the water of the word. The water of the word We have to be born of water. We have to be born of God's word. And I forgot to mention this is part six of my series, Born of Water. So we are to buy gold. We are to clothe ourselves in white garments. And we are to by salve from our Lord to anoint our blind eyes so that we may see. Those whom I love I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. What door does Jesus stand at and knock at? What are the doors that prevent our Lord from coming in? Well, here he's speaking individually to us, so it's the door of our heart. 
but also think, you know, we call it the church. The church is really the called out ones, the ecclesia. But we call now our buildings the church, and we have doors at our churches. Christ knocks at the door of our church, but do we let him in? I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him, and he with me. To eat, remember Isaiah 55, buy of me, buy food from me, rich food. If you hear Christ's voice in any way, open your heart and he will come in and, and eat with you. That means he will commune with you. You can begin to feed upon his word. Then there's the promise to those who actually do this and who overcome that I will not read at this time because I want to focus on who Jesus is. Do you realize, do you realize how much he provoked the Pharisees and the Jews when he came? They just couldn't take it. Let's go to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Verse 9, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people, that is the Jews, did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but born of God. We must be born of God. John is telling us who Jesus is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's speaking of Jesus. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Sixteen, for from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth or grace and the law came through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the giver of the law. He's the one who gave Moses the law. But he also is the giver of grace. And then verse 18. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. No one has ever seen God, the only God, that speaking of Jesus, who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Now remember that no one has ever seen God. In John 5, verse 37, it says this, And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard. His form you have never seen. 
and you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one who the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me. That's what Jesus said to the Pharisees, to the Jews. And then in John 6, 46, he says this. Verse 45, it is written in the prophets and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except him who is from God. He has seen the Father. Okay, that's Jesus speaking in chapter 6 where he is talking to the Pharisees. And that is in the context of him telling them that he is the bread of life and that he is the bread that came from heaven. And that because he is the bread of life and that he is the, the bread that came from heaven, that they need to eat his flesh and drink his blood if they are to have life within themselves. Do you think that provoked them? I mean, man. It's just, it's so in your face. And then before that, in chapter 3, in the book of uh, John, John uh, Jesus is speaking to um, Nicodemus. And that's where he says, he talks about being born again. Being born of the Spirit and being born of water. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Amen, Amen. I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Well, Nicodemus says in verse 9, how can these things be? Jesus answers him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you don't understand these things? So then he begins to explain a little bit and he begins to talk about himself. Verse 13, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. See, he's speaking to Nicodemus when he said this that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Clearly, Nicodemus knows Jesus is talking about himself. So just think about how provoking is this to, to say things like this to another person, another human being. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true, comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Well, the next chapter, Jesus meets the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well. And tells her that she needs to desire the water that he can give her. Chapter 5, Jesus calls God his Father.
chapter 6, he feeds the 5,000, and then after that reveals that he is the bread of life. Then Jesus goes to a festival, the Feast of Tabernacles. And on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Chapter 8, he says that he is the light of the world. That if the Jews would believe in him and abide in his word, they would know the truth and the truth would set them free. Then he calls them children of the devil. So Jesus is, he's saying things that people just can't, they can't grasp. They can't, they can't believe that someone is saying this. So then at the end of chapter 8, Jesus, he calls them illegitimate children. And the Jews answered him, saying, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works of your father. They said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever, whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Who? The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he's the judge. Amen, amen. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? See, that's, that's the issue, isn't it? That's the issue. Who do you make yourself out to be? Who are you? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. What? What did Jesus just say? Abraham saw my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, they said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, amen, amen, truly, truly. I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Oh, my. What did he just do? 
He just spoke the name of God. He just spoke the Tetragrammaton, the four letters that are the name of God that was revealed to Moses and that Jews do not utter. But he said it before Abraham was, I am. So he used the name of God for himself. Do you see that? He used the name of God for himself. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. See, we think, we think that we know who Jesus is. But have we really have we really come to that place where we believe that Jesus is God? Let's go look now. Let's go look at scriptures that would have immediately have come to these Jews' minds when he said this. And then we'll understand why they were ready to stone him. So let's go back to Genesis, starting in Genesis 12. Because, see, Genesis 12, 1, is where you begin to have the story of Abraham. And his name at the beginning is Abram. So turn to Genesis chapter 12. And here it is. Now I am said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So this is the calling of Abram. This is the time when I am revealed himself to Abram and spoke to him, giving him a specific command. Then we have an, a very interesting event happen in chapter 14 of Genesis where Abram's nephew Lot is captured by some warring kings and Abram then goes to his rescue and defeats the kings and brings Lot and the king of Sodom back. And in verse 17 of Genesis 14, it says this, After Abram's return from the defeat of Kedor Laomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheva, that is the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He, that is Melchizedek, was priest of God Most High. And he blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Now, what is this all about? <clears throat> Let's turn to um, Hebrews chapter 7. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And to him Abraham apportioned a tenth part of everything. He is first, by translation of his name, that's Melchizedek he's talking about, king of righteousness, Melchi Zedek, Melchi king Zedek, righteousness, king of righteousness. And then he is also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. He is without father or mother or genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the Son of God, 
he continues a priest forever. See how great this man was to whom Abraham the patriarch gave a tenth of the spoils. Well, who was Melchizedek? Was this event in Genesis 14, was it actually a time when Jesus appeared in the robes of a man, robes of flesh? Because see, it says here that he has neither beginning of days nor end of life. He resembles the Son of God. Okay. So now we're going we're gonna to move on. Then we go to uh, Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of I am came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. So they talk for a little while. <clears throat> and now I want to move to another chapter. Genesis chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, I am appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your seed after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations, this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your seed after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. So here we have now the giving of the covenant of circumcision when Abram was 99 years old. So 17.1 begins by saying, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord, that means I am, appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. So I am appeared to Abram and spoke to him in chapter 17 and then in chapter 18. After this, I am appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O oh Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. And then he prepares a meal for him. But it begins by saying, I am appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. So when... Jesus was speaking to the Jews. And they say, you have seen Abraham? And Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. He was saying to them, I am the one that Abraham saw. I am the one that was there. I am the one that came to Abraham. I'm the one that told Abraham what was going to happen. I'm the one who implemented the covenant of circumcision. Can you 
imagine. Can you imagine meeting the one? The God I am who came to Abraham. And then remember Jesus says no one has ever seen God. And yet he appeared to Abraham. That's because he can say that because he did not appear as God. He did not appear in the spirit to Abraham. He had to appear in flesh. That's the only way that a man could see God and live. Jesus affirms that he has seen God, that he has seen the Father. Now another, another revelation, and, and I think it's an important understanding of the God we serve. Well, before I get into that, I want to I want to read you something from uh, something I found online, and I'll try to remember to put a link to this because it, it's interesting. It's called the Revelation of the Tetragrammaton. Um, written by a Catholic, and sometimes the Catholics, some Catholics get it right, just like sometimes some Protestants get it right. It's called, well, the Revelation of the Tetragrammaton. And one of the most important revelations concerning the nature of God in Scripture, God revealed to Moses the name which Moses should use to represent him to the people of Israel. And here he's quoting from um, Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 through 15 from the Revised Standard Version. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. Now in that Revised Standard Version, when it said the Lord, the God of your fathers, that is actually the word I am, the God of your fathers. So in our Bibles, they... They always write it, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And when you see that, that's the tetragrammaton. That is the, the four Hebrew letters, Yod, He, Vav, He. And then... The first thing he says, this author, uh, his name is uh, Henry Carlson. He says, Mr. Carlson says, While there is no name, no word, no title, no thought which can absolutely represent God as he is in himself, there are many names and titles which God gives to us which fittingly reveal something of his transcendent greatness. The Tetragrammaton, Bob Hay, what is that? yad he vav he the name often transliterated as Yahweh or Yahuwah or Jehovah, 
is most fitting for God because of how it represents, because of the mysterious ambiguity contained in the meaning of the name itself. For often seen as indicating, quote, I am who I am, close quote, it really fits not only the present, but also the past and future tenses for the word to be. Indeed, the present tense of it has to be extrapolated as part of the intended meaning as the Hebrew. What is said, therefore, could be, quote, I will be what I will be, close quote, as well as, quote, I was as I was, close quote, even as it can be read to indicate, quote, I am that I am, close quote. So this is what Jesus said to the Pharisees. Before Abraham was, I am. And so they picked up stones to stone him because obviously he had called himself God. Now Jesus represents, represented the Father. He said, I only do what I see the Father doing. Clearly, the Father resided in the spiritual heavenlies. And Jesus was a, a man. And he calls himself the Son, the Son of God. But in the Old Testament, you had, the Jews finally got to the place where they were sacrificing their children to Moloch in order to appease God. And God says, it never entered my mind that you would sacrifice your son to appease me. Well, have you ever considered then, how is it that God the Father sacrificed his son for us? Well, I think we need to, to consider who the son is. Who is the son? If we go back to John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. Who is this? Who is this? He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Verse 3, John 1, 3. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now consider that God said that it never entered his mind that we would sacrifice our sons for ourselves. The Son, Jesus, did not die for the Father, for God. Jesus is our Father, our Father died for us. <laughs> 